You can't stop smiling because you know this is a major recruiting agent for your party. Well, it's, I mean, yesterday we got hundreds of new members did joining the form. Yeah, we did. Coming, you know, in droves. It was remarkable. I mean, yesterday was a politically charged mega day, wasn't it? From the minute Suella went to then David Cameron's appointment and then that dog... A bone to a dog, if you like, appointing Esther, who has oodles of common sense, and thankfully, at least you, there will be her voice in 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 cabinet, if not as a member of cabinet. But uh, what a day yesterday's been! Why do you think people joined Reform yesterday? What do you offer that they feel they lost in those changes yesterday? Yeah, well, Suella Braverman, in my view, was arguably the last genuinely conservative member of cabinet. Correct. She spoke for traditional conservative values. She wanted to eliminate illegal migration. She wanted to bring migration down. She was obviously at her wits end because she's been making public pronouncements, almost breaking collective responsibility mm -hmm. for now a 12 month period. Um, and she also wanted to call out the two tier policing system, which to, you know, the common man on the uh, Clapham omnibus, you know, it's quite clear that groups of, you know, certain groups of people treated much more leniently than other groups of people. And DEI, diversity, equality and inclusion, which I hope Esther will tackle head on, is the root of the problem. It's not just something institutions adopt voluntarily. It's a regulatory requirement for institutions, businesses, pension funds, insurance companies to practice DEI. And if they want to eliminate the two-tier policing system, if they want society to go back to a more homogenous, um, collective, cultural, an integrated culture, the thing to do is to get rid of DEI, which... What does it stand for, diversity? Diversity, equality and inclusion. Oh, and God. At, at its heart, Stand Andrew, it. what it basically says is that ethnic minorities, people from uh, a, a minority religious backgrounds or with sexual preferences of a minority nature, should have their interests and rights promoted above those mm. Uh, of the majority. And why should they? And why should they? It is the embedding of racism. It's the embedding of prejudice. Mm. And I have to say, having been brought up in this country ever since 1979, when people say there was more racism around back in the 70s and 80s than there is now, I have to say, I didn't experience any racism. And where was your fa where's your family from, Ben? So my, ma my, my, my dad's Punjabi, yeah. and my mother was born in Hounslow. Yeah. Um, Isleworth, actually. So, right. you know, just... Um, yeah. uh, um, West London. Um, so I'm sort of half half. But I was, you know, I was brought up in this country at a time in a recessionary environment. Andrew, you'll mm, remember I it. Do. There were lots of divisions in society, but we didn't have racism. I was brought up to believe that everyone, we didn't have institutional racism. Mm. I was brought up to believe everyone was equal. And that was it. It was a settled state. Now we're told everyone isn't equal. Black lives matter. Yeah. And well, however which way you want to cut that, it, it implies white lives don't matter as much. Mm. Yeah. And that can't be right. And the police and, taking the knee to this. And, and, and the police, the, the way the police policed the march and policed the uh, so-called right-wing thugs who were kettled and prevented from being able to go to the cenotaph in the way that they wished to. I'm not making any excuses for violence on the streets of London. That is completely wrong. But there was, there was verbal violence non-stop during that march of the kind that if it had been made by white people holding St George's flags, yeah. the police would have stepped in they instantly. Yeah. Yeah. They did, they, it is, it is two-tier, isn't it? It is two-tier. And, and, and so, so the, the reason people are joining reform is because they see Rishi Sunak, an unelected prime minister, doesn't have his party's uh, backing, does, certainly doesn't have the electorate's backing, getting rid of a, a cabinet minister who spoke for the people. Mm. You know, the majority of people in this country want Brexit. The majority of Brexiteers speak and believe the things that speak of and believe the things that I believe in. Um, and what's your personal opinion of David Cameron as a politician? What does he now bring to this? Well, I'm, I'm astounded that he would appoint David Cameron. Leave aside all the obvious democratic deficit yeah. that, uh, you know, that appointment reflects. It's a vote of no confidence by the Prime Minister in his own MPs. He must have looked round his party, parliamentary party, and said, I can't see any one of you fulfilling the Foreign Secretary's role adequately. And then when you think about the role itself, 
David Cameron was the prime minister who engendered the Arab Spring. Mm. He was the one who tore Libya apart. He Gaddafi did. was an awful man. Yeah. But we now have a failed state in we Libya. Do. We nearly brought Egypt to its knees. In fact, it was brought to its knees. The Muslim Brotherhood took Egypt over, which had until that point yeah. been a Western ally. It went to the Muslim Brotherhood and then thankfully General Sisi took control again. It nearly brought Saudi to its knees. Now I've got a lot of criticism of the Saudi regime, but you do not want to destabilize Saudi Arabia. It ruined Syria. Mm. And all of this destabilization that David Cameron brought to the Middle East enabled Iran to take a very powerful position and Iran funds Hamas. And it's also part of the reason we've got so much mass migration Absolutely. In, the in the Middle East. So David Cameron, for the choice of, for the democratic reasons which are obvious should never have been appointed foreign secretary, for the damage it does to the morale of the Conservative mm. Party, he should never have been appointed foreign secretary, for his record in foreign policy, mm. he should never have been appointed foreign secretary. And then the last thing is this is a prime minister who voted Remain, this, was, this is a gentleman, who voted Remain, campaigned for Remain, and had to resign as Prime Minister because of his position and what, on Remain. And it's so interesting, Ben, and what you just did then by saying this is a Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, it's such a high risk to bring him in as a former Prime Minister, because a lot of the concerns about Rishi Sunak is that he doesn't appeal to the electorate, he doesn't seem like a Prime Minister, nobody voted for him. And he's always almost cast himself as the deputy head boy now to Cameron as a head boy. I mean, I joked about the fact that he'd be sitting on his knee at the Cabinet yes. meeting this morning. Well, they say daddy's home, don't but they? But they say daddy's home. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's, it, it, I just don't see how this will work out well for Sunak in any sense. It's not, it's not going to work out well. The, 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 the country is going to see it for what it is. Is, which is a massive swing back to the left. I mean, the Conservative Party has always been too far left, in my opinion. Mm. But it's, it's ejected traditional Conservative values unequivocally now. It's turned its back on the red wall. It is targeting Liberal Democrat seats. And it's going to do all the kind of things that are going to drive Esther mad yes. in the job yeah. that they've just given her. Yeah. <laughs> One last point. You, all you need to know about the appointment of Cameron, Michael Heseltine welcomed it. That old, pompous Remain bore, says Michael Hesertine says, it's great that Cameron's back. And he then said, can we bring back George Osborne too? <laughs> At which point, <laughs> groan. Yeah. Please I mean, it, it's, it's actually a tragedy. You know, I laugh because it's political theatre, it's political farce. Yeah. But it's a tragedy for the country, the direction it's we're right. heading in. There's no vision of how this country is going to reduce no. migration, get rid of no. illegal We've migration, two, grow the economy. Two technocrats, basically, in Cameron and Sunak. And yeah. I, it worries me. Ben, thanks for coming in.